You are <laughs> sole content creator for two separate platforms. I feel like the vast majority of people um, think it's very simple. It's not. I'm assuming if like another treat company came to you and, and wanted to do a deal, you probably wouldn't do that? I do, actually. Oh, that's um, so cool. Um, as much as I obviously love our brand, I do still um, promote other treat companies just because I really love other people's ingredients and like not one treat is the same. You're not afraid to work with maybe some competing brands because you do see the value in variety feeding. I think that's that's really cool. What's next for you and Wolf Snacks? Any projects or anything that we can expect from you? Wow. Okay. I'll announce it on the podcast. Well, I know. Oh, exclusive? <laughs> it is exclusive. I don't even think I talked about it anywhere. So this will be the first time, I guess, that we're announcing it on air. Welcome to the BK Petcast. I'm Bryce. I'm Kinsey. And we created this podcast to help you enrich and extend the lives of your dogs and cats. Today, we're joined by Celine Tran. Celine, also known as Celine Tales on social media, is a pet influencer with over 2 million TikTok followers. She initially pursued a career as a veterinary technician and was en route to vet school. However, However, her passion for animals led her to pivot her career, and she's now the CEO of her own company, Wolf Snacks, where she creates and curates high-quality pet treats. Her content is primarily focused on pet care and education, sharing valuable insights and knowledge to her followers. Welcome to the PetCast, Celine Tran. So first of all, Celine, thank you so much for being on. We are starting to dabble with kind of interviewing the influencers and content creators in the space. And I personally have to say as a content creator, this is something I'm very excited about. So thank you for being on today. Of course. Thank you guys for having me. I feel honored to be on this podcast right now. Well, we really appreciate it. And so, a little bit of a two, like a double-edged sword. He's a two-way celebrity, two-way player, if you will. <laughs> It's a little crazy um, now that I'm getting known from Wolf Snacks and, you know, the social media aspect. It's very strange. I'm still getting used to it. Does but... anybody know you just from Wolf Snacks and not your personal page? Yes. Really? So, no, when we went to, uh, what was it, in Vegas, uh, uh, the Super big Zoo? Super Zoo, there were people coming up to me and they're like, you're Celine from Wolf Snacks. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're not wrong. So it was um, it was getting increasingly popular like wolf snacks versus like my social media page it was a weird in between and to this day it's still very interesting i want to go back to your roots a little bit how did you get I, I kind of a twofold question how did you get into the content space and how did you get into what we call this side of the pet industry yeah so i'm just gonna take you guys way back when um this was circa like 2016 i think i was going to school at the university of montana for wildlife biology because i really wanted to be a vet that was like my you know when you're a kid you're you, you just know so i i've always wanted to be a vet i went to university of montana for two years for wildlife biology i grew up in southern california but i was like i need more I need more to life. So that's why I decided to go out of state. So I was there for two years. But while I was there, I wasn't really getting that much hands-on experience in the vet field. It was more like outdoorsy, kind of like tracking animals type of dealio. And it was really hard for me to land internships when I would come back home to Southern California. Oh. So I told my my family, I was like, I'm not, it's really difficult for me to get that hands-on experience. So let me try being a tech first. Let me make sure this is something that I really want to pursue and do um, before I'm midway in vet school. And I absolutely hate it. So it was a really good decision. I decided to come home, uh, pursue veterinary technician. So I did go to school in Irvine. It was like a nursing program that took two years of my life, which was just absolutely insane. But then COVID hit. So during COVID, I was considered an essential worker, but it was just tough times, man. It was a horrible time yeah. to be an essential worker. And um, I just remember it was an emotionally stressful environment for me. A lot of people were getting puppies off of Craigslist. They were coming in sick. They couldn't afford healthcare because no one was working. But then you have like a COVID puppy. So it was just a lot. And then we were also doing um, curbside. And people were like yelling at me over the phone. It was just a lot. I was getting really like burnt out. We were working long hours. And I just was over my job at the time um and then my sister was like why don't you just download tiktok and i was like 
I don't know, like, is it just people dancing on this app? It's a bunch of teenagers. I was really against it at first. And what year was, was this bored. that you were kind of starting to consider getting on TikTok? Um, it was, what year was this? This was COVID. Um, was it like two years ago? Yeah, 2020. Yeah, yeah, 2020 um, was when I downloaded, when I first downloaded it, but I didn't take it seriously. So I downloaded it. I was just posting Doberman content. It was, I guess, kind of a niche. Um, there wasn't really that much educational working dog content at the time, um, as much as there is today or right now. Um, but yeah, two years ago, it was pretty niche. So I was just uploading a bunch of Doberman dog stuff. And people were just so impressed with like the dogs. I was like, oh, I also have a bunch of pets. So let me record the pets. And it kind of just went into like this crazy wormhole. Um, I decided to do a dog feeding video and that just that just blew up. It was just my daily life. And I, I didn't think it was too interesting, but I guess the rest of the world really did. So I thought that was really fun. Um, but yeah, I was still working as a tech at the time. And my boyfriend, now husband, kind of convinced me to quit my job, but I was very adamant with not quitting because I wanted to still be a vet at the time. But he's like, you know what, just quit, focus on your social media, see how far that takes you and we'll just, you know, F it, why why not? <laughs> and um, I decided to quit my job. We, I quit on good terms. I'm still very close with my vets that I work with or that I worked with. And yeah, I quit my job, pursued social media, finished my bachelor's in um, strategic corporate communication instead of biology. And I just graduated last year from Chapman University. And yeah, I have two degrees now. So that's really awesome. Fun. <laughs> yeah. When you were first posting about feeding your dogs, so kind of right after you downloaded TikTok, what side of the pet industry were you on? Were you already kind of starting to get into the higher quality foods and some of the raw food? Or were you still kind of on the other side of things? Because that's how we started. We were feeding Purina Pro Plan when we started making content. Yeah. Yeah, so I was always very interested in pet nutrition since the get go. Like when I was in vet tech school, um, we did have, I know there's like some arguments with uh, technicians. It depends on what school you go to, honestly, and if you have a nutrition course, but we personally did have a nutrition course, but it was very, you know, tip of the iceberg type of course. It was nothing too in depth, but I did get like a general feel of you know, pet nutrition as a whole, like an anatomy of the animal and all that good stuff. But I was still very much feeding, uh, I think it was Royal Canin yeah. at the time. I thought that was, I thought that was the tip top. Yeah, the man. Best we were deep in it. So I was very, yeah, I was very deep in it. And um, the vets that I worked with, they were definitely against raw feeding. So there was definitely still a stigma around it. Obviously, now things have changed drastically. Um, but when I first started, um, I knew the basics, but I wasn't very like raw feeding and yeah. really into, you know, all that good stuff. So. Well, I feel like when I first came across your content, you were feeding Open Farm, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I was already feeding Open Farm, you right. know, which was. Yeah, I transit uh, amazing food, but I definitely was doing like Royal Canin and then like science diet, you know, when my dogs got like stomach issues yep. and it just kind of uh, spiraled from there. Since your TikTok has garnered a lot of attention, what do you think is the core message of your content? So I feel like there are a lot of accounts out there that do similar content, but I'm really focused and based on like nutrition and education. Um, I think with having the vet tech background, I was always educating my clients on proper pet care, pro like how to exercise your dog, like some training stuff too. Because a lot of people like think techs know everything and we really don't. Um, so they would ask us a million questions like to training, to this, to that. And so I was like, wow, like the basic pet owner isn't super educated on all these little things. So I kind of had to learn that on my own and through experience too. So um, I really try to face my content on education and you know, reasonable education and try not to bash every, anyone else. In the Absolutely. Process. And so what do you feed your pets now? Right now they are eating open farm and we feed raw, but we do, we do switch out. We're also feeding Viva raw for the cats. Um, and then I have the whole plethora of an or reptiles too. Yeah. So they're, they're on a bunch <laughs> of different stuff. <laughs> I love it. That's great. And so one thing that we have kind of, not started to grapple with, but we're starting to understand the weight of it is this responsibility we have because, you know, the three of us, we have a lot of followers. We have a lot of people looking at what we feed our animals and looking to us for advice. How do you kind of navigate that responsibility? Have you run into anything in that realm? 
I, I do feel like I have a huge responsibility. Um, and it comes with the territory, of course. I guess I do my due diligence before promoting any brands or taking on any brand deals, like really looking into the company, their brand message, um, their products, like if they're good quality. I know I, I do get um, contacted by a lot of different brands, but I don't take every brand deal um, just because if I don't feel comfortable feeding it to my pet, I wouldn't, you know, suggest it for anyone else's. Um, but there is like a huge weight, I feel like on our shoulders that we have such a strong impact in people's everyday like lives for their pets. And I'm sure you guys get approached too. And um, people always tell me like, I feed my dogs exactly what you feed your dogs. Mm -hmm. And that makes me so happy. And um, everyone just tells me that they've, we've really helped improve their pet's life. And that's the best thing ever whenever I hear that. And it makes me so, so happy. Even if it was just one pet parent, I think it would yeah. be absolutely worth it. You are the owner of a pet food company, and you are also an influencer. That's a really interesting dynamic when it comes to brand deals. So I'm assuming if like another treat company came to you and, and wanted to do a deal, you probably wouldn't do that. I do actually. Oh, that's um, so cool. <laughs> um, yeah, because I feel like dogs have such a variety in their diet. For example, let's say I promote like a coat oil and then I promote another coat oil um they're like what happened to the other one why well, I, I honestly i switch them up yeah. i i really do i don't stick with the same one brand um as much as i obviously love our brand i do still um promote other treat companies just because i really love other people's ingredients and like not one treat is the same i love that we have some brands that come to us and ask us for like social media help and stuff and one of the big things i've been telling them is to try and be a resource for people beyond what your brand sells and i think you do that really well you have you know your personal page where you offer all of this stuff but you're not afraid to work with maybe some competing brands because you do see the value in variety feeding. I think that's that's really cool. It's really important to support other brands too. Like I just because I have my own company, I don't want to just be like, okay, F everyone else. Um, this is my own brand. I want to like take over the treat space. It's not like that at all. And I think everyone's just been so everyone in the pet space so far that I've worked with is so sweet and kind and supportive. So it's really nice that we kind of or, or we do like collabs, like we do like giveaways with each other. And I try to bring up other brands too, because they've helped me with mine. And um, it's just a really, really neat space. I love that. So tell us about Wolf Snacks. What do you do? What do you sell? What's your mission? Yeah, so Wolf Snacks was created just because it was really difficult for me to find. Okay, I take that back. It wasn't super difficult for me to find um, single ingredient treats, but it was hard for me to find good quality single ingredient treats. Um, whenever I was going to the pet store, we would, you know, we see the pork ears, um, and they would always be super oily and just really, really, I don't know, like sticky. I always had like this weird residue on them. And I personally wouldn't feed it to my dogs, but I did buy one for my dogs back then. And it gave my dogs horrible diarrhea and oh. it was just, it was really bad. And so I was like, single ingredient treats can do so much better. Um, I feel like we're just getting a lot of a lot of these companies are getting like the byproduct, you know, the stuff that the humans don't want and they're just dehydrating them and selling them. But I was like, this can be improved so much, like so much more. So I decided to start Wool Snacks just because it was just so difficult for me to find um, those single ingredient treats that were good quality. So we source all of our meats from ethical and like humanely raised far like animals. <laughs> come from these really great farms on top of that what's really funny is our duck actually comes from the same restaurant or not same restaurant i'm sorry same farm that serves the michelin star restaurants in our wow. area and That's i had crazy. no idea yeah so it was funny because i was actually eating at this michelin star restaurant in downtown la and there was this duck and they served this duck and it was so good it was my favorite thing of the whole dinner i took a photo of it because i was like this is amazing and then i was scrolling on instagram on wolf snacks instagram and i followed the duck farm on our instagram and they posted like this is our oh, like duck at the restaurant and then i was like wait i literally just ate that so i like reached out to the owner i was like do you guys sell da, da, da? and they're like yeah that's us and so it's just great that you know we're serving our dogs like this high quality restaurant grade like duck feet you know people wouldn't even know that but i really take pride in sourcing these ingredients for our pets and it's it's amazing to get to know the farmers and the people we work with so it's just been really really fun that is so cool so yeah. 
walk us through a typical day in your life because as an influencer and a business owner, I mean, we do one of those things and it's already a lot. So how are you doing two of them? What's funny is after college, I told myself, I was like, I'm going to have all this time now that I graduated. I don't have to go to classes anymore. I can focus on everything. But on, my time has been so limited now <laughs> ever since I've graduated. And I feel like I don't have enough time in the day. But as for, I guess, daily routines, um, I start my mornings pretty, you know, like 8 a.m., like a normal. I don't wake up at like 4. People think I wake up at like 5 a.m. to do everything. <laughs> I really... I love sleep. That's yeah. the thing about me. I just I need my sleep. And so Same. I wake up around like eight to nine ish and, you know, take the dogs out, do the daily pet stuff. It's all it's all become routine now for me. So it's I think it's normal, but everyone's like, whoa, you have to do all of that. Um, so I do have an assistant that does come and help me out, which is very, very nice. Um, so with all the pet stuff and it's just the filming, I think, takes the longest Filming and editing, yeah, because I still do all of my own editing. Oh, Celine. <laughs> God. Oh, I need to find someone. <laughs> you are in the trenches, yeah. sister. I really am. <laughs> Honest, I'm struggling out here. Like, <laughs> I'm like sweating blood, sweat, and tears every day. Um, yeah, so I still do my own TikTok edits. I do have a YouTube editor, though. Nice. So that has really helped me. Um, I try to plan out my content, but it just doesn't. It doesn't flow well, I think. Um, that's just me personally. I know every content creator has their own, you know, way of doing things, but I do everything the day of, which is like horrible. <laughs> <laughs> this is so much stress. <laughs> but I think that's just how my brain works. Yeah. So I wake up every morning, do all the animal stuff, feed everyone, and then I have like around noon time to like think of what I'm gonna film throughout the day. Then I'll like start filming, editing. Uh, I'll post by like noontime ish, and then the rest of the day is like fully dedicated to Wolf Snacks. So if that's replying to emails, customer service, doing all the Instagram things, um, what else? Packing, order packing. It's 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 a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That sounds yeah. like it. So you do your content every single day. Do you have somebody helping you do content with Wolf Snacks? No. My goodness. I know. Yeah, I'm doing double the work. <laughs> you are sole content creator for two separate platforms. I, um, and it's so difficult because everyone, I feel like the vast majority of people um, think it's very simple and, you know, just post. It's fine. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> like that now yeah there's so much that goes behind it and so much you know care and like love too that goes behind our posts and so much time and effort too and it's doing double the work now but with wool snacks at least i really enjoy um i really do enjoy doing the content for since it's like my own you know my own brand so i yeah. feel like i do have to enjoy it but um it's been pretty it's been pretty doing pretty well so far so we are setting up a tiktok shop too Fun. That's oh, that'll, awesome. That'll be really cool. <laughs> so speaking of TikTok, can you tell us about your band that recently happened? So frustrating. If, if, for those who don't know, I was locked out of my TikTok account for probably like two to three weeks almost. And it was, it felt like forever, but I was just unable to log into my account. My password was right. My email was correct. Everything was on par and it just wasn't going through for whatever reason. And I was locked out for like two to three weeks and I tried contacting my TikTok people, but they weren't very helpful, unfortunately, <laughs> which is just so frustrating as yes. a, like as a creator, I really depend on, um, well, I use Instagram too, but TikTok's definitely one of my main platforms. Um, and it was just so difficult to get a hold of anyone and contact was like the support page was horrible. It was just all bad. And one day I woke up and my TikTok content contact was like try again today and then i tried it and i finally logged in what very strange they didn't even say why yeah and i was like in my band did i do something wrong and they're like no your account's in good like good standing good health you don't have any violations no reports or anything and yeah all of a sudden one day i just logged back in and i was like that was weird and i feel like after that my you know if you don't post on tiktok for two to three weeks consecutively they're going to be angry at you the algorithm yeah. hates you so it was really difficult to kind of recover from that like views wise um but i mean tiktok's like a 
it's an emotional roller coaster ride. Oh, you God. have a million views on like over a million views on one video, and the next video would get like two thousand views. Yeah, it's <laughs> unbelievable. Like, okay. We went through something similar. Uh, this was before we were full time influencers. We had a shop that kind of led to all of right. this, and right. we got like permanently banned on TikTok. Like I got on one morning and it said your account has been permanently banned and like there was nothing we could do. So we had worked with TikTok on a small business campaign a couple weeks prior and we reached out to them and they were like, okay, like we'll reach out to the whoever team it is that decides. And they were like, yeah, we, we can't find out any information. And we're like, what do you mean? This is literally how we're making money right now. So did that kind of, for us, that taught us to diversify our our account and our community and stuff and really to lean into an email list, which we're still trying to get into. What about you? That is very smart. The email list. Yeah. What a great idea. I really need to hop onto that. <laughs> there are brands that we talk to that are significant brands and they're like, we do well over 50% of our sales from our email list alone. It's crazy. Absolutely. Yeah, I really need to hop on that. Um, that is an amazing idea. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I yes. So when I was banned on TikTok or logged out or whatever, yeah, absolutely no no help whatsoever. Whatever team wasn't even wasn't even helping. I did uh, YouTube. I nice. was actually kind of happy. I was like, you know, what? I can just pivot. I can pivot my content. It's fine. I my videos on you or on TikTok are already three minutes long, and yeah. YouTube was like eight minutes. So I was like, what's a couple more minutes? Yeah. So I started uploading on YouTube and surprisingly YouTube's like a very slow grow, but I have some videos on there now that have over a hundred K views, which nice. is pretty, pretty crazy. That's um, yeah. yeah. Cause I, I, it was kind of like a, a post and forget about it, but you know, for TikTok, you're like constantly refreshing, like how many views did I get today? But for YouTube, I wasn't used to how slow the grow is. Um, so my friend that actually does YouTube as like a career, he said, just post it, forget about it. Yeah. And then eventually the views will rack up. And I was like, huh? Like, that's weird because it's not short from content like um, Instagram or TikTok, which is what I'm used to. Um, but yeah, I kind of just posted it, forgot about it. And then I checked and I was like, oh, wow, this is like, you know, gaining some traction. Yeah. So I really just decided to pivot and do YouTube and kind of focus on that because it's just such a different ball game. It than totally all is. Yeah, we tell people all the time, it's like a million subscribers on YouTube is vastly different than a million oh, yeah. followers on TikTok. No, for sure. I feel like the TikTok growth was almost overnight, which, yeah. I mean, isn't like a good thing. But at the same time, I'm not complaining about it. Um, but it is, I feel like once you reach, you know, over like the million, you kind of like plateau. Yeah. Which is kind of like what I'm dealing with right now. I've been at 2.4 million for a really long time now. Totally. <laughs> Yeah. So, but at the same time, a lot of brand deals too, they don't really care about how many followers you have on TikTok. They're more about like engagement, audience and all that good stuff. Yeah. But um, I did end up switching over or like more, not switching over, but focusing on a lot more on YouTube. So now I'm trying to at least post one video a week on YouTube, but I do have an editor for that, which is really helpful because there's no way I'm going to learn how to do Final Cut Pro. And an eight minute video is way different to edit than a three minute video. <laughs> She takes like, I think she, she takes a week to edit an eight to 10 minute video. Yeah. And it's, that's like a good turnaround. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know some people take way longer and luckily she only edits for me and herself. So yeah. it's a lot quicker, but I just, I can't, it stresses me out. Totally. Well, I, speaking of YouTube, some of the creators that we follow that kind of teach how to do YouTube, a lot of them say you can't even judge how a video did view wise until 150 days after you post it. Oh, so wow. it's like it YouTube is playing the long game through and through. For sure. And the thing about YouTube, too, which I find really interesting is your content's kind of like evergreen. Yes. Like it's always there and it would never get washed away by an algorithm, um, which I think is very nice. So I've been trying to focus more on instead of I know a lot of people want to see day in my lives, um, but vlogs don't really last that long. Yeah. So I've been trying to do more, you know, educational videos on YouTube and things that would last longer. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the move right now. Well, maybe by the time this podcast comes out, we'll have some collaborative content oh, out. Yes. yes. Are you guys, do you guys start YouTube yet? Or how, yeah. How so honestly, we 
we started YouTube very similar to your situation. As soon as we got banned, we were like, okay, we cannot put all of our, our eggs in this one basket. We can't mm -hmm. have TikTok be able to control all of our sales and stuff. So we were, we switched over to Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. Yeah. And we had some pretty significant growth from YouTube shorts to begin with, because I think we, we were just like, putting the same content on YouTube shorts that was going out on the, all the other platforms. And I think mm -hmm. YouTube was really pushing the shorts when they first came out. So we have like almost 85,000 subscribers, but we've never had a long form video get over 30 K views. So we mm -hmm. don't have like a long form community quite yet. And that's, that's the big goal of 2024. But yeah. I was listening uh, where there's these two guys, Colin and Samir on YouTube. They're, incredible they teach all about like how to be a youtube creator but they were talking the other day about something so interesting where if somebody's like on tiktok and they're watching one of your videos or one of our videos and somebody says oh what are you doing they're not going to say oh i'm watching celine or oh i'm watching the bk pets they're going to say oh i'm watching tiktok youtube it's like the actual individual is the creator and youtube is just the platform definitely i think there it has to do with the way tiktok TikTok's algorithm works. It's very fast paced. Everyone's attention span nowadays is just so short. And so you're just like scrolling in a bottomless pit. And that's why like no one goes on TikTok just to watch like one creator. You're watching like oh. everything on your for you page yeah. until like you're three hours deep and you're like, oh gosh, I've been on TikTok for way too long. Right. Um, this is YouTube. You know, you go on YouTube, you're searching up you're never really on like the explore page for too long. At least yes. I'm not. Rachel does a great job at YouTube and we actually had like a whole conversation about YouTube strategy and what she does and her tips and everything. And I've, I've really taken that into account. So I'm definitely going to be trying to do more like educational stuff on, on YouTube. So just so the I content lasts longer and when yeah. people post or when people search, you know, Doberman care or any, any of those like keywords, then then our videos would pop up. Absolutely. Those same creators I was just talking about, he mentioned like when you get on TikTok, you're kind of like sitting back and you're like, okay, show me, show me some good stuff. Whereas like when you get on YouTube, I feel like you're very much like I'm getting on YouTube to search for something specific or I'm getting on YouTube to see if my favorite creator posted a new video, you know, and I think there's just so much more value in that as a creator. No, definitely, definitely. And I think it's also very important for us too, since I mean, you guys already do have a very strong following that um, people just want to see more. So yeah, yeah, I think that option too of YouTube is really, you know, um, nice for our, our followers to have. I totally agree. I feel like it's kind of like, it's either like YouTube or a blog. I feel like those are the two that people really use as the more in depth content if people want to dive deeper into stuff. Well, and one thing that I'm like yeah. really trying to brainstorm and think of for us is ways to do, like give people incentive to follow us on all the platforms because I'll do this. I'll find someone I like and I follow them on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and then I see the same exact content on every single platform, which our yeah. short form we like post across all of it, but like. I want to see something a little bit different. Like I want Instagram stories to be a little more personal. Like I want YouTube to be the longer form. So maybe like we were thinking maybe TikToks is where we do live streams and stuff, trying to offer something kind of exclusive on each platform. Yeah. 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 Talking of like, have you guys dabbled in live streaming? Is that something you guys are doing or is it just for a little we were doing it on a weekly basis like every single tuesday and we haven't done it in a while just because we've gotten so busy but we both really enjoy it like yeah. it, it's fun to kind of go back and forth with the community and answer questions and stuff have you done it i have in the beginning i feel like when i first started tiktok i was very um more hands-on on live streams than i am now um but i don't think i've live streamed in so long but i really i think that's one of my goals for next year is definitely doing more live streams. I feel like you're able to build more personable connection connections with your audience. And it's just, it's really fun. So I, I definitely want to live stream a lot more. Yeah, us too. So lastly, before we wrap up, Celine, what's next for you and Wolf Snacks? Any projects or anything that we can expect from you? Yes. So... Wow. Okay. I'll announce it on the podcast. Well, I know, oh, exclusive? Okay, so we are, <laughs> it is exclusive. I don't even think I talked about it anywhere. Um, so this will be the first time, I guess, that we're announcing it on air. Um, but for Wolf Snacks, we are actually expanding our lines into supplements, which nice. I'm very excited about because I've actually 
helped formulate these and I'm really, really excited. Um, so I guess our first, wow, this is really, this is crazy that I'm saying this, but our first um, product is gonna be a wild Alaskan salmon oil that nice. will be coming out very soon. But it is wild caught, um, really clean ingredients, nothing included. It's not like a mixture of different fishes or like seed oils or anything. It's just straight up wild caught Alaskan salmon oil. That's amazing. So, well, really congratulations. That. That's so cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it took us a really long time to source the right people for this. But um, it was like visiting, you know, visiting factories, seeing, talking to so many different companies and brands um, that wanted to, you know, help us out and carry or help carry our products. But yeah, we're really, really excited. So it was a lot of sourcing and a lot of headaches. But yeah. we're finally here and we're getting to the developmental of it. So I love yeah, it. I'm super, super excited. So then let me ask kind of a follow up yeah. question. <laughs> you are already in the treat and the chew space. You're getting into the supplement space. Do you have plans to kind of make wolf yeah. snacks a one stop shop in terms of pet food and stuff? Or do you see it kind of staying in the more treat and supplement section? Yeah, so I think well, for Wolf Snacks as a brand itself, um, I see it more in the treats and supplements section, but I have thoughts in the near future, we'll see, about expanding into pet pet food and stuff like that. But it sure. wouldn't, it probably wouldn't be under Wolf Snacks. It would be under a different company or something. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So That's really, awesome. Really <laughs> I love it. Well, I'm yep. assuming most of our audience already knows you, but for those of you or for those that don't, where can they find you? Website, social media, where can they connect? Yes. So I'm mainly found on TikTok and Instagram under my username at Celine Tales. I also have a dog Instagram, like a more Dobie working dog Instagram, and that's at Draco the Dobie. And as for my brand, Wolf Snacks, it's just Wolf Snacks on Instagram, TikTok and on the web amazing well thank you so much for being on today celine we always say like especially when we have these business owners big big companies are generally not coming on and being this transparent with people so we have to commend you for that and we're just we're very grateful for you spending the time with us of course like i said thank you guys so much for having me and i'm really excited to do like collabs in the future and stuff yes. so yes. you guys are amazing i'm hoping by the time this comes out we'll already be doing collaborative content so That'll be very exciting. And for those of you that are listening or watching, thank you so much for spending your day with us. As always, I'm Bryce. I'm Kinsey. We'll see you in the next episode. Oh